Hi, my name is Jennifer Ng and I'm a Wella signature artist and I'm so excited to be here today to do a transitional look from fall winter into spring summer. So with our wonderful model Alyssa today, we are going to do some beautiful, quick, easy services with balayage placement to have a nice transition into spring summer. All right, so let's talk consultation. What are we doing and what are the steps to get us to our final look? So talking to Alyssa, I really wanted to find out the hair history. She had let me know ahead of time that her hair was previously lightened and it was probably to about a level nine. So next we're gonna look at her natural level. So I'm using my natural level finder here and we discovered that she is a natural level five and that is going to be our light brown. So we will be doing a deeper root for her, so we will stay around that natural level five for her root. So next up, what we have is assessing her mid shaft and her ends. So since this was previously lightened, where she mentioned to about a level nine, we are using our underlying pigment to be able to see what contributing pigment we still have left in the hair. So this is going to sit around a level six and seven. So now that we've got our steps in place, we're gonna start first with the haircut, and then we're gonna move into our color formulation to understand where we're gonna go from our natural through our mid shaft to our ends with our lightener, and then we're gonna complete the look with our final glaze. Now that we finished the haircut, let's move on to the fun part, the coloring. So I already went in and pre-sectioned. So I based this off of being able to create a perimeter halo. So as you can see here, I started at the front of the head using the flat of my comb to predetermine where that section is going to begin. And then I created a perimeter halo all the way to the back and connecting it on the other side, meaning everything that we do on this side will be mimicked on the other side as well. So we're gonna start in the back section for our lightning. We are working with our Blondor Free Lights and we're doing two different formulations with 30 volume in the back and 20 volume in the front. We're working with triangular subsections, so working in a nice panel, as you can see here, and we will be able to create a wider panel up on top yet still have enough hair to create a nice seamless transition into the lightness. All right, so let's start our first section. So we have our triangular section. You wanna be able to make sure that you're holding it nice and taut. So you have a nice flat surface to paint on. And I'm working with two different formulas. So I'm actually gonna also have two different brushes to remind me where I'm painting. So the first formulation that we're using is going to be Blondor Free Lights with 30 volume. And I have already scooped out a little bead of the product. We wanna make sure that we keep our brush super clean. And I'm gonna work in the middle of the hair shaft and work my way upward and then work my way down. So slowly working that product through. Saturation is super important when painting for the application process because it really is going to predetermine the lift that you will receive. I like to slowly create that V section first and work my way through and build that saturation as I go. I like to gently work the product flat with the brush with the hair. So this way you get a nice soft transition and really work out any lumps or bumps that you see so that you get a nice flat surface. And as I work the product through, I'm gonna build up my V a little bit more. And this can be customized depending on how much lightness you're looking for when working with your free lights. So if you are going up a little bit more, remember this is your depth. So the higher you go, the more lightness you will have and less depth that you will keep. So I'm gonna work through the ends and I do love to work with a paddle to be able to saturate the ends fully. So I'm gonna work with my paddle here. Make sure you bring that hair nice and tight and bring through the ends. And at the end, I will place on my paddle to thoroughly apply more products through the end. 
All right, so let's move on to our next section. So I'm gonna mirror what I did on the right side to the left side, creating again that triangular section. Okay, so the last section in the back here, I'm gonna do a small V. And so when I'm doing this section, because we've already gone so high on the top sections here for these, we are gonna work in a smaller lower V. So as I apply, I'm from the mid shaft down, and then slowly working my way up. As you can see, we did three triangles, two bold ones on the side and a smaller one in the center. And now we can move on to the front section. So this is where we're using our second formula, our Blondor Free Lights with 20 volume. Same thing, mixed with one to one and a half mixing ratio. So I'm gonna start at our first section right in front and create our little triangle. So some things to put into consideration. We did say that the pieces in the front were a little bit more compromised. So I am putting that into you know, a thoughtful process as far as what I'm going to lighten and what I'm not. So we're gonna leave some of these pieces out just a little bit so we can make sure that we get enough brightness without any damage. So within this triangle, I'm using my second formula. And as I mentioned, to be able to separate the two, I'm using two different brushes. And because these sections are going to be a little bit smaller, I like to work with a smaller brush as well. So I'm gonna work in a small bead of product. And when working with hair that is a little bit more on the compromise side, saturation is just as important, but I am definitely a little bit less heavy handed as far as the saturation goes. I like to kind of just work in some of that product. And because this in the front here was already a little bit lighter than the back, and I feel that there will be a lot of lightening that would happen with the product that we have, the saturation for me will be a little bit more gentle. So as you can see, I am working the product in, but it is a little bit more translucent than the amount of product that I'm putting in the back. Same thing, I'm gonna work through the hair, dust upward if you like. A really great tip is always maybe have a dry brush on hand where you can come in and use a dry brush to erase if you have anything that you feel like you need to kind of smudge out a little bit more. So I'm gonna come through the ends, use my paddle as well, and just do a light coating of my lightener through just so that we can get a little bit of brightness in that front. There you go. Our next section, we're going to do one more triangle. So as you can see, we're really keeping it super simple. We want to be able to get really nice pops of brightness, but not really confusing and doing a much complicated sectioning pattern and in subsections in order to achieve the look that we want. Think about where I'm headed as far as light translucent saturation to a little bit more through the sides and then maximum saturation through the back. So as you can see here, we have a total of two sections in the front and then one and a half technically in the back. And then now what we'll do is mimic that on the other side. All right, so now we have our right side completed. And as you can see, we mirrored the exact same thing on the left side. So let's move on to our next section. So we're gonna take what we already clipped away and we're just going to release that and lay that gently on top of the lightener that you've already done. And we will do the same sectioning of what we did previously in triangular sections where the crown lives. All right, so now that we've released our last section and I've broken it down from front and back, again, we're gonna start in the back section here. And so we wanna be able to start with our triangular subsections, working through. And as you can see, there are some things that I put into consideration. 
So her hair is a little bit layered, but a little bit more kind of on that one length as well. So really going in and over painting too many sections is not necessary. It's really important that you don't over paint. So I'm just kind of coming in in this crown section that we had, and we're gonna do one kind of nice wide section here and have a little bit of that brightness come through, but also being able to maintain some of that depth underneath and around where we're going to paint. So then that lightness can really pop. As you can see, I'm completing this entire look with these, but you can also do just a nice diagonal or small check mark as well, as far as where you want your placement to be. If I did a diagonal here, you are able to encompass a little bit more depth in the center. The reason I'm doing a V is just so that we can pull a little bit more brightness through the crown as well. All right, so now we've completed the back, two sections with a center one in a smaller V, and now we can move to the sides. As you can see where our first section was painted and what is coming over. I really like to be able to be visual with where my placement is. So as you can see, I do wanna be able to create probably two sections here that will lay on top that will give me a nice variation of depth and lightness. With my first triangular section, I'm going to come in. And a nice tip when coming through the front, um, being able to have a little bit of lift when you're holding and painting allows to make sure that you aren't really going to be able to have any of your lightener come in contact with anything below. So a lot of the times I like to also work away from the face and also elevate my hand as well. There we have completed our right side and now we're gonna go and finish on on the left. All right, so we completed our lightning service. So here's a recap of what we did. So we started in the back, utilizing our first formulation, which was our Blondor Free Light with 30 volume, um, mixed to one, one and a half mixing ratio and nice simple sections with three painted sections. Then we moved to the side with our free lights with 20 volume and a little less saturation as you can see. And we did on top our crown that we released our last section and mimicked the same painting V sections throughout. So now we're going to let her process and I'm going to do more of a visual processing to get her to the lightness that we want and be able to start our glaze. So here we are, I really like to do a quick check in between the processing time, just to see where we are and see if we're ready. So how I go about checking that is taking the last section I did, and also it's in the front, because remember it was a little bit more compromised here, so I do wanna make sure that we are keeping in mind the quality of the hair. So I'm just gonna go through and work a little bit of that product off the ends so I can get a little bit more of a visual of where we are and if we've achieved the lightness that we need. So you can see here, we are exactly where we need, so we can now move on to our next step, which we can get our rinse. All right, so now that we rinsed her out, we're gonna move on to our next step. But before we do, I like to check to see where we are. So I came in and rough dried just the front section so that we can see how far we have lightened her. Take the section and as you can see where those lightening pieces are, I'm going to utilize our exposed contributing pigment as a guide to see how light we are. And here we are at a level eight, so here we can determine what our next formulation will be. So now that we know where we're starting from, we are gonna start our glaze. 
So what we're gonna focus on today is the Shimmer Melt Glaze. And what that consists of is a root shadow that melts into the mid shaft in the end with a second formulation. So we're working with Shinefinity today and the formulation we're using for our root shadow is going to be 05 stroke 37. A beautiful golden brown that is gonna cast a nice deeper shadow to start our melt. I'm gonna work with a brush and bowl application, working at the root, half an inch to an inch. And then I'm going to use a comb, and this is my favorite comb to use because of the material and the teeth here will glide through the section nice and easy without really pulling down the root shadow, but just blurring it slightly. Then we're gonna move on to our next section. and just combing through very gently to just give it a little bit more of a root smudge. And I'm doing wider sections. This does not have to be minuscule sections. We wanna get the application in nice and quickly and just glide through with the comb. Apply gently half an inch to an inch as you can see here and then you're just taking your comb and make sure that the comb isn't flat to the head so you're not pushing the product down. You want to have just the teeth of the comb coming in and pulling the color down ever so slightly. And then we can move on to the second side. Make sure that you keep your sections nice and organized. This is the biggest advice I could give when doing a root shadow and melt in general, being able to keep your quadrants nice and clean so you can move from one section to another quite easily. So now that we're done with the root shadow, we're gonna move on to the mid shaft and the end. So just a quick tip, I like to use a foil and place it on top so that therefore when I'm moving my sections, I don't work into any of the root shadow that I've already placed. So for the mid shaft formulation, I'm using our Shinefinity 09 stroke 36, three parts, and one part of our 07 stroke 59. And bottle application will apply a lot faster, but I am also still gonna use a comb and my fingers to work through the melt. And then just taking my fingers to blur a little bit more of that product in so you can create a nice seamless transition from the root shadow melted into the rest of the glaze. And then comb through with the teeth. And then you can move on to the other side and then the back and do the same process. So now that we've completed our glaze, we're gonna let it process for 20 minutes total for our root shadow and our mid shaft and ends to become a beautiful melt. And then we're gonna rinse and blow dry so you can see the final results. So here's my completed look for that beautiful transition from winter to spring. So we use some quick application and services utilizing our Blondor Free Lights 20 volume and 30 volume, and including our Shinefinity Shimmer Melt Glaze to complete the look for this transition. Hope you liked the look that we did today. And if you're looking for more education offerings, check out wellaed.com and follow me on Instagram at jennifer.wella.